Hi everybody and welcome back to D-Race Shop. Today I'm working on this Suzuki 25 horse two stroke outboard. I'm going to be replacing the water pump impeller and servicing the lower unit. So let's get started. Now the first thing we want to do is disconnect the shifting linkage. And your shifting linkage is located just above and on the leading edge of the lower units right there. So I'm going to zoom in there and show you a little bit of detail on it. Now as we get in there a little closer, you want to back off this little jam nut right here. Then we've got a barrel nut that adjusts the linkage. So what we want to do is just reach in here with your wrench, back off the jam nut just enough to break it loose. You don't want to turn it any more than that. That way we'll know where to put our shifting linkage when we reattach it. Then we're just going to back that, that barrel nut off just enough to get it to turn loose of the shifting linkage. There we go, right there. Now it's got that shifting linkage disconnected, so now we'll work on the lower unit bolts. Now the lower unit is held on with six bolts. Three on this side and three on the opposite side just like it. So we're going to remove these bolts and that should allow us to remove this lower unit. bolt out of the lower unit here. That should allow that lower unit to come off. Now the lower unit's kind of held on with some dowel pins. So once you get all the bolts out of it, you may have to kind of wiggle it a little bit to get it to turn loose. There we go. And just ease that lower unit on off there. Just like that. Nothing to it. All right. Well, we'll take this over to the workbench. We'll take this water pump cover off and see what our impeller looks like. Here's the top of our lower unit. And there's a water pump housing. The impeller's right inside there. And this cover is held on with four six millimeter cap nuts with 10 millimeter heads on them. So we'll just take those off. That should allow us to take that water pump housing off. All right, now we've got those nuts and lock washers off of there. I'm gonna take me a screwdriver. I'm just gonna kind of very carefully pry up on that cover in a few places to kind of break it loose. Just like that. And I'm going to work that cover up off of the shaft. Just like that right there. I'm going to just ease that on off. Right. There's our impeller housing. And you can see our impeller right there. Now one thing that you'll note about this impeller, I'm going to zoom on in here and get you a little closer look at it. If you'll notice these impeller blades are curved. That's a good thing to note because as this impeller is installed, you're going to have to turn this shaft in the direction that the shaft normally turns to orient those vanes correctly. Otherwise, you'll damage the pump the first time you start the motor up. Now, this old pump here doesn't look too bad. Some of the impeller blades have sat so long that they've kind of got a kink in them, so now's a good time to replace that. So to get that impeller off of there, what we'll do is just take a screwdriver, just kind of very carefully pry up on it, pry it up on that shaft a little ways. And what you'll also notice is that there's a keyway right there. That's what keys the impeller to the input shaft. So be sure you don't lose that. All right, there's our impeller. Now there's a keyway there. You want to kind of pry around on that, pop that keyway out. Now we've got that impeller off there. We'll reach in here and very carefully pry that pump plate loose. go. We'll go ahead and take that off. There's your pump plate. Then all we'll need to do is just kind of go through here and clean off all the gasket material real good. Then we're going to inspect the pump plate and get ready to reinstall the new impeller. Getting ready to reinstall our pump housing now. And what I did is I just took the pump housing, cleaned off all the gasket material, and took a few minutes just to kind of give it a good inspection, make sure there wasn't no real deep nicks or gouges in that pump body. That one looked really good. And uh, this is our new impeller. One thing you'll note on it is that it has a keyway cut only on one side of it. The top side is solid. So when you go to install that new impeller, be sure to install it with the keyway facing down. 
Now you can buy just the impeller from your local Suzuki dealer or sometimes you can get them through an aftermarket source. But uh, what I like to do is I like to go ahead and just get the whole impeller kit. It's just a few bucks more and you go ahead and you get you a brand new impeller plate, you get a new keyway and a new gasket. And it's only just a few bucks more than just the impeller by itself. Now one other thing I like to do just before I install the impeller and the pump housing is I like to take just a small dab of grease and just kind of just put a light smear inside that pump housing. Now it only takes just a very very small trace. We're only putting just a just enough in there to give that impeller a little bit of initial lubrication just before the water hits it. And that way you don't overheat that impeller and burn it up during the initial startup. I'm gonna do the same thing with this impeller. I'm just gonna put just a just a little smear of grease on the top and bottom sides of it and a little bit on the impeller blades. Now you don't want to overdo this grease here because you don't want it plugging up the insides of the cylinder head and things like that. I mean this is just such a small amount all you can see on there is it's just kind of shined that up a little bit. We're not just really gobbing it on there. But that, that'll save that impeller that first time you fire it off. Alright now we got everything ready to go. Now we'll reinstall it. So let's put this pump back together. What we're going to start out with is the pump plate gasket. Now one thing to note, these studs that hold all these parts on are oriented in such a way that all your components will only go one way, so that way there's no way to get them wrong. So we'll install the gasket first. Slide it down onto those studs. Just like that. Next we'll install the pump plate. There again, it'll only go on one way. Once you get that drop down in place, next you want to install the keyway. Just put the keyway in the shaft there. And if you'd like, you can take your hammer and just very carefully kind of tap that in there till you get it bottomed out. Next go on is going to be the impeller. And as we stated earlier, the impeller has a slot on one side and solid on the other. The slot in goes first, so we'll put it on this direction. Just like that. Now we're going to install the impeller housing. Now what we want to do, as we're installing this impeller housing, we're actually going to turn the input shaft clockwise as viewed from the top facing down you want to turn that clockwise because that's the direction that the shaft normally turns when the engine's running and what that's going to do is as we set that housing down there it's going to curve those impeller blades to have them oriented correctly so that the pump will work right so let's take our housing we'll just ease that down onto that shaft and just kind of rest it on those studs next we'll turn the shaft clockwise and put just a little bit of downward pressure on there and you'll feel those impeller blades just curl their way right on into the housing. There we go. Now we've got the blades oriented properly and we can go ahead and put on our lock washers and our nuts and we'll have this lower unit about ready to install. All right, now we've got our Pump housing reinstalled onto the lower unit. So let's go ahead and reinstall this. 